Katy is not the paradise many people think it is, and in this video, we will be uncovering the hard truths as to why people are packing their bags and moving away for good. Well, hello, my name is Danielle. I'm a realtor here in West Houston, and for quite some time, Katie was the golden child of the Harris County suburbs. If you were moving to Houston and looking for the perfect schools, affordable housing, a family-friendly neighborhood, Katie was the first place to look. Well, guess what? It is not like that anymore because that level of demand has sent home prices through the roof. It is just not as affordable or desirable as people felt it was at one point. So right now, the median sales price for a home in Katy as of early 2024 is 544,450, whereas the price in 2019 before the pandemic was 345,450. So that is a whopping 58% increase in just three and a half years. Let's not stop there though, because it's also the interest rates. A 540,000 mortgage with 3% interest rate is 2277. A 540 mortgage rate with 6% rate is 3238. That is nearly a $951 difference for the same house in the same location. And that is not including the property tax, the home insurance, uh, and the HOAs, which have also all gone up in the last few years. In fact, let's just talk about property taxes, okay? The average property tax in Katy is about 3% on average. So on a $540,000 house, that is about $16,200 annually, or about $1,350 additional to your monthly mortgage payment. Um, but we are not done yet because homeowners insurance has also gone up in the last couple of years. Homeowners can cost anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000 annually. And lastly, most of the suburban neighborhoods are part of a massive master plan community with HOA fees, which usually costs about $800 to $1,800 annually. So to sum it up, Home prices are up 58%, interest rates are up 6%, property taxes are higher, and you are pretty much guaranteed you will have to pay an HOA if you buy a home in Katy. So when it is all said and done, owning a home in Katy right now will cost you about $4,888 a month. Number two is the amount of traffic and population increases. Katy has a ton of traffic, especially during peak hours. Uh, it is convenient that we have freeways in Katy that go all directions, so it's easy to get in and out of Katy. However, the North and South Highway is a toll road, so depending on what area you are in, you have to pay to use it. The highway that runs east and west is I-10, which is one of the widest highways in the country, which also makes it one of the most dangerous as well as one of the most congested at times. But it's not just the highways that residents are annoyed with, it's the actual roads in and around Katy that can get quite congested. If you live in the more established area of Katy, the roads get really congested because that is where all the commercial and entertainment for the area is. And if you are building a new home, a lot of the roads in those areas are the one-way farm roads with just stop signs currently. This also goes for the amount of people who live in the area. There are approximately 2,989 people per square mile in the Katy area. It is making the parks and the shopping and the neighborhood amenities more crowded and more congested than it used to be. Number three is the lack of diversity when it comes to housing options. Most homes in Katy are built within master plan community model, meaning these are massive developments of homes that look somewhat similar in appearance and have smaller yards. In fact, the newer the home is in Katy, the more likely your home is going to not have a ton of yard space. And this can be a little disappointing, especially for a lot of folks moving here who are expecting a Texas-sized yard. Um, it's just not that common in a majority of the Katy neighborhoods. Number four is Katy is older now, at least the area people want to be in when they think of Katy. Katy was the newest and greatest and shiniest thing about 10 to 20 years ago now. So although their school district still remains one of the best rated districts in Texas and one of the main driving forces behind its popularity, a lot of people are wanting newer homes. 
if they have to pay a premium price and they have to pay higher interest rates, they want a new and modern updated home. So people are starting to move outward to find more updated and modern homes that still have the high rated school districts and family friendly communities. So what are the alternatives to Katy then? First one on the list is Fulcher, which is part of Fort Bend County and one of the fastest growing cities in Texas. The main school district is Lamar ISD and is also has an A rating with the same scores and progress of Katy ISD. However, the homes are slightly more cheaper, property taxes are slightly lower than compared to Katy, and the area is less developed, so there is more opportunity for newer homes, zone to great school, and more appreciation in your home to come over the next several years here. In Fulcher, you can expect a lot of similarities that you see with Katy in terms of master plan communities, good rated schools, the same types of shopping centers. However, currently, Fulcher only has 1,400 people per square mile, so it's already going to feel a little more open. The second option people are going to instead of Katy is Cyprus. Cyprus also scored an A ranking as a school district and had overall great test scores for its students. Uh, Cyprus was also named the best zip code in the country people are moving to in 2024. And it's for good reason. Cyprus has a few nationally recognized award-winning communities, an excellent school district, and commercial amenities that are quite similar to Katy, if not better. It's also currently the least crowded of the three with only 1,300 residents per square mile. The benefit of both Fulcher and Cyprus is the options for new construction. Both these areas are rapidly growing with new and updated master plan communities, increasing your already limited options by hundreds of choices compared to options within Katy proper, especially if you are looking for something built after 2015. And here is the thing, if only a fraction of the builders and inventory are listed on the MLS or Zillow, how are you going to know if you've seen all the options? Well, you have to contact us because my assistant and I are constantly keeping a pulse on the new construction in these three cities, analyzing the sales data, the current inventory, the incentives, and researching on your behalf what is available and what is coming for the future of these areas because a lot of this is not on the public sites. Also, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe as it helps YouTube get the information out to more people. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.